with more on education and technology. My next guest was among those who testified at today's assembly hearing. Michael Borges of the Association of School Business Officials is joining me now to explain his concerns. Thank you so much for being here. It's good to see you. Thank you for having me. Um, okay, so uh, this is kind of interesting because, first of all, the assembly does these like periodic check-ins that's sort of um, standard operating procedure, so it's not any special thing that they do. Sometimes they have hearings where they're like, oh, there's an issue, we should have a hearing. This is like one of their check-in budgetary hearings, correct? Yeah, I mean, I think the, the Assemblywoman, uh, uh, Kathy Nolan, chair of the Education Committee, just wanted to get some pulse from the community, the education community, as to how the Smart Schools Bond Act was going, how our capital projects uh, were being processed and, and approved, and you know, wanted to get a pulse ahead of the legislative session starting in January. Right. So uh, the Bond Act authorized $2 billion in general obligation bonds for technology, and it was actually kind of controversial at the time. The governor pushed it very hard. But the people who were on the opposite side said, you know, as soon as you incentivize this, the second you buy this technology, it's going to be obsolete as soon as it gets out the door. And so not to say that kids should not have technology in the classroom, but going into debt may not be the best way to do it. Right. I mean, the, the bonds uh, can be used for uh, in interconnectivity, so for internet access, Wi-Fi access. Mm -hmm. It can be used for, to buy technology in terms of like, you know, Chromebooks or other kinds of uh, handheld devices. It can also be used for preschool classrooms and, you know, re uh, removing, uh, particularly in New York City, you know, the modular classrooms and things like that. So Which it has is not technically technology, but yes. Well, yeah, I mean, there, there are several, there's also safety issues. Security was one mm -hmm. of the other uh, areas that it can be used for. So um, unfortunately, there's a separate process for approval for that. It has to go to a smart schools review board, which was supposed to meet quarterly um, and hasn't been meeting quarterly. So mm -hmm. there's, there's a backlog there. So that's one process. And then there's the regular process for uh, typical school construction projects or, or renovation projects that go through SED, uh, the State Education Department. And there's currently a, about a seven month delay in getting those approved. And there's about 700 projects in a queue waiting to get approved. And you know, every, every fall, when typically when school districts go to the voters and get their bonds to uh, you know, go forward with these capital projects, more and more are being added every year. So you, you have, capital projects technically that can be linked together. So, so a lot of the school districts have uh, combined their smart schools bond proposals with their capital projects. Which makes sense, because you would be yes. building a new classroom right. and you would want to get wire wired it for... and everything else. Right, right. but the, there's two different approval processes right. and they're not linked to one another. Well, and also they're not on the same timeline. So no, if exactly. you, it sounds to me like one could get approved before the other gets you approved nailed and it. you couldn't start your construction and then it would oh, be yep. a mess. It's, it's a mess. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Okay. So the, the part of the problem here is I don't even know. I mean, I see what your recommendations are, but you want to streamline the process. But it seems to me, why would you think if SED can't handle the existing process, then you make it one bulk stream of of linked together projects? And that to me sounds like delay even worse than the current delay. Well, see, the legislature did and the governor recognized that there was a problem. So they allocated $800,000 more for the state education department to hire additional architects and engineers, which are crucial professional positions necessary to review these projects. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the civil service regulations, the salary levels are not competitive to the marketplace. So they have un really been unable to fill a majority of the positions they, are, they were allowed to hire for. So that, that, that solution has yet to bear fruit. So given SED's issue, they decided to outsource to uh, one of the BOCES to do some preliminary uh, reviews. So there's a, an initial review and then there's a more of a, an in-depth review which architects and engineers are needed for. That, project, that process has now hit a snag in terms of trying to get the BOCES to hire the people or to co contract with people. So, so, so every attempt, SED, and they've made great attempts to address this backlog, but every time they do, they've hit another roadblock and another so stack. So here's the interesting thing. I feel like I'm starting to sound like a broken record on this because I keep expressing all this frustration about the siloed nature of government, right? Yes. You've mm -hmm. heard me and this is like my broken record. So just, j I'm getting on my soapbox. I'm just letting everybody know. <laughs> I know, right, I'm short, it's hard to tell. <laughs> but I, I guess the, the point of the matter is, so you have a governor and also a few years ago, more so a mayor, who were like screaming from the rooftops about the need to expand universal pre-K, pre-K, mm -hmm, we need universal mm -hmm. pre-K. Then of course there were some districts, just a handful that didn't have K, but um, all day K that is. So, uh, you know, 
whatever. Anyway, it's not mandated in New York. But you can't have universal pre-K. You can't expand the number of kids who are going to school if you can't house them. Right. So the fact that, that you're having all these delays and backlogs, and SED is not a gubernatorial agency, no, just to be not. clear. Right. But you would think that people would be thinking about the needs to get to your end result, but as it turns out, it's difficult to get there. Yes, I mean, uh, again, they've, they've made an honest effort to address the problem. The legislature and the governor provided the resources. The DOB finally gave approval for hiring people. But again, it's not enough, it's insufficient. And what we need, we made some recommendations that will expand the number of BOCES that can do some of the plenary screening process mm -hmm. uh, that will help you know, alleviate the backlog. We also uh, have advocated for uh, elucidating the civil service requirements that will allow SED to go outside of civil service on a temporary basis, emergency need only, until the backlog is addressed, or perhaps use other state agencies like the Dormitory Authority. They have a whole construction department that handles their projects. Maybe we can use, SED can use the Dormitory Authority to help streamline some of the, uh, the applications and review the applications. Maybe I should not ask this question, but dare I ask, did the scaffold law come up at all? Oh, shoot. You know, uh, the, uh, <laughs> it's interesting that you said that. The, uh, the folks who were, there's like a scaffolding law coalition. Yes, they there is. actually sent me an email right before I came to the, the go to, uh, to the hearing and said, could you mention Wix? Whoops. And, and I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Not that well, you, you can do it now. Get it out. Get it out of the way. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, it was the assembly hearing, and you know, I, I think Wix reform is, is pretty much a dead issue with with them. But um, you know, it's another stumbling block uh, that it's even bigger than the SED issue. Um, but yeah, I mean, having to go out to bid for separate pro you know, contractors and, and subcontractors and everything else is a cumbersome process. And and but. You know, one hurdle at a time. Mm -hmm. And I think the SED hurdle is probably easier to address than it is the Wix law. So but the, the other thing is we're talking about how many years ago was it that the Smart Schools Bond Act was authorized? Uh, was it 2000? It's not even, 14, the number of 12? districts that are actually bothering to apply is well, fairly I, low. Well, so the, the pipeline, there's a pipeline of, of projects into them. So I think um, 320 million has been approved out of Two billion. Yeah, that's right? nothing. That's nothing, right? But uh, you know, th there's a problem with the approval process. So they're not meeting as frequently as as we would like to approve those in the pipeline. Mm -hmm. But the other thing is too is that that again, school districts are trying to coordinate their smart schools bond applications with their capital projects. So they're not doing two separate things at the same right. time. It makes sense to incorporate you know technology into a building project instead of doing it separately. So they're waiting for that kind of thing to happen. Also, you have to be careful about going out and buying, you know, a million dollars worth of Chromebooks all at once, because in three years, four years, they're all going to be dead, obsolete. missing, or obsolete. So, so where does the money come from to replace them? So well, you're some, going into an election year. My expectation well, is you're going to have a lot of yeah, money floating around. School districts can't count on that. So some of the good ones, I mean, the, 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 the smart ones are staggering their purchases. So they'll yeah, buy some, some of, the of them under, now. Those under pressure that are smaller and, and working close to the bone already don't have enough people who have all the time in the world to sit around and make applications to this stuff. Well, yeah. I mean, it, it is difficult for smaller school districts to apply, and, and BOCES are there to help them some do that sort of stuff. But yeah, I mean, it, I wouldn't read too much in the fact that we haven't spent all $2 billion of it. Uh, it's, it's the process of the ones who are submitting projects. Mm. They need to be approved in a more expeditious manner. Okay. So we're almost out of time. I just yeah. want to quickly ask you, does any of what you're recommending require legislation? Um, yes. Again, uh, we, we one of the things we're suggesting to uh, Chairwoman uh, Nolan was that uh, the legislature actually require SED to come up with a list of recommendations about how could they streamline things and make things mm -hmm. better. Mm -hmm. uh, they did that similarly a couple of years ago when the legislature asked SED to come up with a list of ways to reduce all the reporting requirements at school districts because we have to report everything. Yeah. You know what yep. I mean? And so they came with a, up with a list that helped streamline the number of reports that school districts had. So it is possible. It is possible to do that. You you know what I mean? So, and then, you know, the, the legislature may need to step in about the civil service issue right. and about other things. So there are legislative and also regulatory uh, remedies to okay. our situation. Well, good. So we'll have this conversation again at some point during the budget season and we'll see where you're at. I thank you so much thank for you. coming in.